a combination of gearheads. John the instigator, Derek the conservative, Will the builder, Sean the racer, and maybe a guest invite you to listen while they sit down, have a drink, and discuss cars. More subscribe to the podcast with no driving gloves. Time now for the ride. Obviously, as the intro just told you, it's no driving gloves. Uh, we're joined with Derek tonight. It's a small, light crowd. Where is everybody, John? Where is everybody? Remember, Will's went all Hollywood on us, and he's uh, probably over hanging out with Courtney Hansen, uh, doing whatever you do with Courtney Hansen around cars. Work on them. You know, working and sweating and cussing, probably. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Sean, I'm not sure. I think he's actually, I, he got a whole bunch of simulator chassis parts in, and uh, I know they've got some orders they got to bust out. So I don't actually, I don't even know where they're assembling them. I don't know if they're doing it at his barn or if he's still in the uh, warehouse they'd rented, but I assume he's putting together uh, Nemesis racing simulator chassis somewhere for customers and clientele. Uh, in a unmarked warehouse off the I-4 uh, just south of Birmingham. Yes even though the I-4 is way south of Birmingham. Let's get some feedback from the listeners. Now, that this will be the third episode with our new intros and outros, and we think we need to do some, maybe some leveling or something with, and maybe the music's a little bit too loud, but give us some feedback. What are you thinking of the intro and out? Should we change it, or is it tolerable, or do you just, hey, hit the fast-forward button and get to the exciting conversation we put out? Derek, what do you think of the new intros? You know, I like them. Uh, I like the uh, musical choice that you made there, John. But I'm one of them on the uh, the crew here, let's call it, that uh, I think we need to do some uh, leveling of the mixing and the, the sound. Uh, my opinion, the uh, the music, although maybe it's the best part, is a little loud and uh, covers over your uh, voiceover of the introduction of the show. So. I can agree with you. My gorgeous voice needs to be better heard. Yes, your your falsetto. Say that is pod safe mu- music because uh, if you're in the background in the back workings of the pod community, there's a new piece of software out there and it's nailing a lot of podcasts for either utilizing music blatantly wrong or you know if you're recording like we are and we potentially the TV's on in the background and. They're list, you know, the wife's listening to MTV or something. It picks it up, boom! You and you get three strikes with any uh, podcast uh, host service. The third time they pull any of your episodes, they pull all your episodes. So you got to be really careful with it now. It's just a really sensitive subject, and really, there is no licensing available for podcasting to utilize popular music. Because I'd love to put some ZZ Top and you know, some of these decent driving songs on, but there's just literally no way to do it. Even if I had a million bucks, well, maybe a million bucks, I could talk to the record company and get it done. But there's no no simple contract to sign and be able to do that. Matter of- There's a really great band out there called Cake, and uh, they've got some great uh, car songs. So, you know, if any of the band members of Cake happen to be a fan of the show, uh, you know, if they wanted to work with us to like maybe give us some permissions, that'd be awesome. Are they the ones that did a thousand dollar car? That's just one I'm thinking of. I don't know if it was cake. Or I don't know. Uh, stick shifts and safety belts is one of their big ones. Uh, and, and the thing is, is even if cake gave us permission, you still have to get the record company most likely to give permission because it's just all breaks down to just because they wrote it, sang it recorded it uh play it in concert doesn't mean they have the rights to let us use it It, it's a really complicated scenario but i'm sure that's what everybody came here for is to discuss listen to us discuss music rights and podcasting if you want to do that contact me on my podcast consulting service you know but actually john just not to jump ship on anything tonight but that may be a good future podcast is cars and music because in the history of technology, there is a, I mean, just immense study on culture, music, and automobiles. I think it is actually on our topic list, and I never bring it up because I've been been doing a lot of research into that licensing. And because it, I think that episode would be so helped by being able to put the music Doing an episode like that, we might be able to get away with it under fair use, but 
even though everybody says fair use, you can play 10 seconds of a song, etc. Fair use is actually a defense. It's not a legal right. Fair use is something you use after you get sued. <laughs> so uh, even though we might make, you know, five or six dollars a month on the podcast, that's not enough to an attorney such as Gordon Firemark, who is a podcast expert attorney to handle that for us. So we'll figure out a way to like name drop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm hoping for some free legal <laughs> services, Gordon, <laughs> but, uh, and before we get to our main topic, you know, I harass Derek and will all the time and will even more so because will's got thousands of followers on social media and that, and they never can reshare a show. And Derek's That's got right. a, Derek's got a good excuse because he doesn't do a lot of social media. But if you happen to follow Derek on certain social medias, and I'm not sure if you have to have permission to follow him or not, I don't think I ever requested permission. He's been putting up some pretty cool pictures of uh, one of his rides. Uh, Have you all of a sudden uh, been utilizing your Chevy a little bit more, Derek, or in taking it out and um, enjoying it? Or... Is it broke down in a cornfield next to your house and you're just, well, I'm going to take some pictures of it. Is Ouch. It? <laughs> Ouch. Well, we know, you you know, it has, it has uh, that what, paper clutch in it or something? Leather. Leather Le- cone. Oh, le- leather cone clutch, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, so I'm, uh, you know, okay, let me start over here. So I am attempting, making another one of my attempts to get a little bit better at using social media and to attempt to appease the producer and creator of no driving gloves and start figuring out how in the world to use social media to the benefit of us. So uh, if you notice, John, my first few pictures did not have hashtags, which I have learned hashtags help you uh, get more people to see your posts. So I went back last night and hashtagged all of the pictures of the Chevy 490 (laughs) that I have been posting. So I am social media illiterate somewhat. Uh, I'm trying to learn, but yes, I have. So everybody probably knows, actually, it's been about a year. Uh, Yeah, it would be right about a year that I bought the Chevy 490 touring car and uh, took yeah, when I acquired it, I think everybody, we talked about it on the show, it had a, a seized engine and a few issues. It was about two weeks before one of the big car shows I go to every year, Old Car Festival at Greenfield Village. However, that show is canceled this year, as pretty much every other show has been. And I took two weeks, got the car up and running, made it to the show with a running driving car. But as as it goes with most project cars you buy, you fix one thing and slowly you discover the next thing that's an issue and slowly you discover the next thing. So not long after Old Car Festival, I was preparing, kind of getting used to the car. You know, you always want to get a feel, especially for an antique car, how it's going to act on the road, you know what its quirks are, let's call it, so that you can drive it safely any distance. And I was driving it back and forth to the local town that I live near, Franklin, Kentucky. And one night it shifted hard twice, and that's when the leather off the cone clutch decided to let go. So then I had to tear the car apart, get the clutch out, send it out to be re-leathered, get it back, get it back in, that I've been driving it around, wearing the clutch in, you know, actually getting it kind of seating properly, uh, making some adjustments. And I'm kind of now at that point where I'm back to trying to drive it more regularly, get it back on the road, uh, get used to the quirks, things like that. Because the goal is eventually to drive it about, it's about 30 miles to work. So about that. But so I've decided that in the process, you know, when I did the engine, worked on the engine last year about this time, I did some posts and kind of fell off. I'm, I'm going to try to get a little bit better at using social media, try to promote no driving gloves more. 
And hopefully all of them, I like nine followers or whatever I have, maybe 10 now if John joined in, uh, will want to listen to the show. Although I believe all of them already do because I think that's where the followers came from. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying here, John. And, and uh, I think in a couple of weeks, we're going to have an interview with a good friend of mine and a large collector that we're going to have some uh, news on that podcast. And there will be some social media posts regarding that news on my uh, social media accounts. So, Well, just to let you know, you have a uh, 75 75- um, Instagram followers because I was filling out some Ooh. forms today um, trying to get us some I had to give total social media outreach that's good well I'm glad my 75 <laughs> helped we will we'll throw a party when I hit 100 followers on Instagram well everybody just you know I think it's uh Derek Moore at, on Instagram I don't know uh, it's just Derek E. Moore Derek E. Moore I'm I'm also not creative with my like Alfred E. Newman that we talked about on the uh, Nate Adams podcast earlier in the week that um, <laughs> they're doing that Mad Magazine or Alfred P. Sloan. Yep. You know, you say Sloan, and all of a sudden I jump back to that fabulous car movie, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, with the wonderful Ferrari, Fiero, and I believe it's a Chrysler Town and Country station wagon, isn't it? You mean the Ferrari? <laughs> yes. For anyone that doesn't know, the Ferrari and Ferris Bueller's Day Off was not a Ferrari. Uh, I was trying to think of something to say. Sorry. <laughs> Did I just break your break your heart, John? No, I yeah. Well, I, I'm you know how I am with the, those uh, replicas and that, and you know I'd kill to still have a Mc, McBurney uh, Daytona, black Miami Vice ish, Crockett's haircut, Crockett's. Five o'clock shadow. I kind of have that going on there right you now. Go. There you go. If you're you're watching the video here, way back on episode. Oh, we forgot to mention one other thing that I wanted to do in the intro is if you go back to episode one thirty three, about fifteen episodes ago or so, we uh, it talked with Matt Farah and he was in the construction phases of West Side Collector Car Storage, and he just announced this week he finally has a certificate of occupancy. He's going to start being able to hang pictures, put his podcast studio in. He's going to be able to quit podcasting from his uh, living room or his kitchen. Uh, he's got. What's wrong with podcasting from your living room? Uh, well, Fair is a little bit higher up on that totem pole than us. You know, we get into the top 150, maybe break the top 100 now and then, and he's consistently top 10. He's beginning to move cars again, I guess, into the. Uh, storage facility be doing some media days and i think it's going to open to everybody the second or third week of september and he still has some spaces so just to put a little shout out to matt there but going back to my mcburney ferrari and miami vice and cars and tv shows why we've got you going through our back catalog go way back and Derek couldn't even believe that three almost three years ago almost three years ago to the day Episode 14, we discussed reality TV and defended some of the actions and some of the stars. And, you know, some of them have went on to prove some of us right, some of us wrong, me somewhat wrong. But in the, again, the episode earlier this week with uh, Nate Adams, we got talking about Pluto TV and the kind of productions um, Adam Carolla is trying to put out a little bit stronger, a little bit less throwing tools, screaming, motorcycle-type build shows. And a little bit more to, I think, what our listeners want and what car people want is real reality TV. And what got me really thinking about it is that, you know, I edited that Nate Adams podcast and go back and listen to it. It's a great podcast with a Holly, you know, a Hollywood producer who build who produces and edits some of the best car movies to come out car docs to come out of uh hollywood i would say in recent years but really forever that was combined with um we had the reuniting episode of on i think it was on discovery maybe it was tlc i don't know of uh 
Orange County choppers, father and son and Polly Jr. and senior are going to build a bike together. And it all went. Polly tried to keep it. I think that modern, more intelligent. Let's have a family show. Let's let me apologize to my dad. Let's go back and reminisce and build a bike. And senior came in and did all of the senior stuff and really just, you know, jumped down Polly's throat and all his design decisions were gone. And by the time they were done, they built another cookie cutter chopper and even nothing that Paul Jr. designs or PJD would put out. And it got me thinking, has has all the new options that have come out, you know, since reality TV. I mean, reality TV, say, go back to 2000 with Survivor. We still had satellite TV, cable, but still maybe 100, 150 channels. Fast forward 10 years ago, there was all that drama and that fighting and stuff. And I'm even going to throw Jesse James under the bus and say, you know, we had Monster Garage and Monster House. And we had, I guess, country music television did some of the better shows, but still unbelievable uh, what shows. was um well, i guess we can name shows but uh i can't remember the name of it but boyd coddington's shop oh uh, american hot rod yes that was another drama filled yeah i can't remember there was mikey mike the guy that ironically mikey but mike the guy that did all the cnc stuff and yeah that that show i think i, I kind of enjoyed that one of course i was always like boyd Obviously, I think Boyd passed away, and that's actually what put the final, mm-hmm. no, no pun intended, put the final nail in that show's coffin. But, uh, mm-hmm. but even then, that you know, that's 2007, 2010 range, and now here we are 10 years later, and there are so many other choices. Do you think the selections or what's happening out there, Derek, and the entertainment world for automotive programming or automotive information shows is getting better or is it staying the same or better choices or what, what's your take on it? I think once I put my size 10 and a half across your microphone, things will get better. Yeah, well, that's okay. Cause oh, that looks like, sorry, I, I, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm taking a con for doing a conference this week and they sent me a heck of a deal on a sure SM seven B like, Robin Quivers from the Howard Stern show uses. So if you want to size 10, my microphone, I'm, I might be upgrading anyway. I have stopped watching a a lot of TV. I I really actually don't even have general TV access anymore. Uh, We have Netflix and uh, Hulu and a couple things. And we tend to just watch movies every now and then. I spend a lot more time either working on projects or doing something and and not really paying attention to TV because I got sick of the reality TV shows. They weren't educational and it just wasn't like you say, it was all that drama filled crap that evidently Americans wanted to see. And I hope things are getting better. I mean, obviously, our our co-host here is doing one of the shows, reality TV shows, and I feel like Will is the type of person to try to keep it more educational and more uh, real than most reality TV. I mean, I do think that there are shows that have gone that way and try to get back to more just education educational you know the i'm I'm not going to remember what they call each one but uh, saturday i think it's saturday mornings maybe sunday mornings there's some like the is it power block tv or one of those where it's really more about the builds and they say there used to be power block or tv or something you know that's where courtney hansen got her start and i don't know what they're calling it this week but you know courtney hansen got her start yeah. there uh, the late jesse combs got her start there um mm-hmm. ian mm-hmm. the kind of a four by four guy got a start there uh stacy david who does some of probably the he was doing the abnormal show that everybody wanted to see back then and he you know he ended up having to go do his own thing on the gears network and i think he's on mad tv Mm -hmm. or maverick tv or maybe he's doing self-production now but 
Yeah, and you know, actually, uh, a gentleman that doesn't evidently live too far from me. I've not met him. I don't know him. I may run into him at some point. Supposedly, he only lives maybe a half hour from where I am, but that's uh, Stacy David who does uh, the like truck show. Yeah, that that's exactly who I was talking about. And it, oh, yeah, Dave, you were saying the last name. Sorry. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, he, he evidently does not live far from me. He, his shop and stuff is right down near Nashville. Uh, and that was actually, although I am a truck guy, I, I like pickup trucks. I drive pickup trucks. That's what I've pretty much always owned, uh, other than my collector cars more so, you know, I grew up in an area where lifting trucks was the thing. And, you know, I probably plan on doing something, something to the truck I currently own. But although I never get into the extreme four by four that like Stacy did uh, or does, I think on his shows, I still did watch that show because he actually made it informational about how you actually work on a vehicle and build a vehicle. And you actually got some educational purpose out of that show rather than edit it if you need to john because we'll call people out and if we shouldn't just redact my statements but rather than watching something like gas garage or something stupid like that where it's just about yelling at each other and grabbing a beer and doing donuts in the parking lot which teaches no one anything productive it's at least some of the shows are educational and i think the interesting thing that you mentioned in the nate adams episode was you mentioned Peter Klute's name. Of course, Peter has legendary motor cars up in Canada, a TV show. I, I believe it's still on, as far as I know, legendary motor cars. And that is the name of the show, right? I know it's the name of his shop. He did legendary motor cars for a while, and then that went off the air. And he self-produces everything, so he controls the quality. Right, and then he yeah, put that's... out something else with his, ch- with his son. And I can't remember yeah. what that was called, but I believe he's, I haven't seen anything new from him in a couple of years, but as I said in the Nate Adams podcast, and as a surprise to many people, I don't have a subscription to Motor Trend Television because the shows they put out are not necessarily the shows that I want to see. That's where I I like the fact that you mentioned Peter because Peter's show, and you talked a little bit about it, always had a more re- realistic timeline that it followed because he self-produces. I actually had the opportunity to be on an episode. He came to Cleveland, came to the Crawford Auto Aviation Museum while I was there. Uh, We went and looked at Art Arfons' old shop, uh, Green Monster 11, the remnants of Green Monster 11, talked about the importance of Art Arfons and his history, the Green Monsters. Peter came to the Crawford. We did a tour with him. We sat down, did interviews at the museum, the significance of the museum, the history of Cleveland and the automobile. And Peter was genuinely into the factual information and the stories behind things. And even the episode when it came out, although, yeah, they have to edit it, he made sure that it was still informative and interesting to the people who were going to watch and didn't try to dramatize anything or do anything crazy. He just talked about the facts and, you know, the cars and art, our phones and all of that. And I've always respected Peter for you know that show and what he did on it. Uh, it was, it was actually really interesting getting to also meet him and kind of see him in action doing the show because it literally is Peter and a camera guy. And that's it. Yeah, see, I had personal experience with Peter also when I was with the Barber Museum shortly after I started there. You know, probably I was probably there uh, a year or just over a year. And him and when he was shooting his original show, uh, we had Tom Netgal or uh, he's passed away since, but a co-host named Tom, yes, yep. uh, a Canadian guy. And they came down and they brought like six cars with them with to exercise and do some performance evaluation, you know, at Barber Motorsports Park. And we went out to dinner with them and he's just a genuine guy. He's a car guy. 
and authenticity means something to him. And I mean, you don't, he started, you know, one of his shows that original, you know, showed it. His original shop was a one car garage. And, you know, now he's got this multi million dollar complex and, you know, probably has an inventory of a hundred million dollars worth of cars at any given time in his showroom. And he's, you're, you're right. Is I have a lot of respect for Peter. He always went against the grain. And I think that was part of his problem is, I mean, he had to write the checks to put those shows together because when we had three shows come and shoot a pilot at Barber's and Will's mentioned before he had multiple people come and shoot pilots at his shop. And even the show that he's doing now isn't his shop. It's he's actually, I think running somebody else's shop for the show, but they always want this drama and stuff. And as I've alluded to, you know, Barber's is, the benefactor of the Barber Museum, he doesn't care about drama. He cares about production. He cares about efficiency of his dollars. He doesn't care if, he, oh, I'm going to make an extra million dollars because I have a TV show. That's not, it's disruptive to, to work. I think we focused in the reality show, you know, whatever that was, where this is episode 140, what did I say? 148. So 134. Five episodes ago, 134 episodes ago, we always focused on the drama. The other thing that annoys me with these shows that are out is, okay, we're going to, let's lift a Jeep. You know, we're going to build a, a, a lifted Jeep. And, oh, here, here's the kit, blah, blah, blah. And we got this from XYZ 4x4. And, you know, you, here's their website, blah, blah, blah. And they have all these other parts. And now we're going to take this tire off. Now we go to commercial and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, then they come back and the Jeep's done. You know, all we got is a half hour. Of, well, we got a half hour of commercials. You know, there's 22 minutes of programming, eight minutes of general commercials. And the 22 minutes of show, you got one minute of intro, one minute of outro, and 20 minutes of them talking about the company that supplied the lift kit, but never really showing us anything but cool powder coated parts, not how to install them, not safety procedures, any of that. And we just get fed up with it. And I think that's where chassis media is. We, you know, talk to Nate and not to really go over them, but since, you know, they're very relevant and very current to our podcast right now, but even, you know, Netflix has put out some wonderful dramas on Formula One. And I, I can't remember, is it called, was there one called One that is very realistic Formula One and follows a Formula One team with no drama? This is what happens. And they're being able to put out some of these shows. And uh, it's Amazon Prime where you can go watch Winning the Racing Life of Paul Newman or the Willie T. Ribbs story or... The Carol Shelby movie and all those put out by Chassis for free because they want that quality programming out. You're not going to go, you know, ABC is not going to put it on because there's no drama. And as was alluded to by Nate is, you know, the car, as much as we think we're great people and wonderful people and everybody in the world's a car person, the reality is, you know, less than three tenths of 1% of the population of this country our car people. So it's never going to be big network stuff. And we've got to rely on these little independents to put out the shows. I know, you know, you said you just have a few of these television show type people, but you said you had some of these non cable network, you know, whatever packages, Netflix and stuff at your house, Derek. But even if you go to some of the non car reality shows, they've gotten a lot better in that, we had there's a uh, forged and fire, which me and my ex-girlfriend really enjoyed watching. Uh, it's a little fast and quick and everybody, you know, love the line. It'll kill at the very end when they're testing these knives that people make. But you actually learned a little bit of the forging process. And when they give you these, you know, here's a car, cut something off of this car and make a knife out of it. And it really gets you thinking and it really teaches you that, you don't go to Home Depot or metal supermarkets and buy a block of iron. You make the you can make this stuff out of whatever with a lot of effort and work. Are you seeing any of that where we're actually showing more of the process and less of the commercial? You're asking the guy that just admitted to not watching TV anymore <laughs> because he got so no. sick of it. 
Uh, <laughs> well, and that's what I'm saying is, have you seen any of that? And if you haven't, will that draw you to watching? Or would that be more enticing to you than, in, as I said, instead of watching a 23 minute commercial for a fuel injection company or you know a coolant or something like that? I think if I knew that there were shows out there that actually discussed the processes, the techniques, and the methodology of working on pretty much anything, be it a car, be it blacksmithing, be it construction, uh, those are all, I'm, I'm a fairly hands-on person. I think everybody knows from this podcast, you know, I work on my own cars. I don't know if I've talked about it before, but you know, most every home renovation that's done in my house, I do. I don't hire somebody to do it. I've grown up learning how to work on stuff. I am much more interested in the processes and the techniques and learning about something I might not know how to do than listening to a bunch of housewives argue over husbands or, uh, you know, a bunch of tattooed guys yelling at each other and throwing wrenches and whatever else reality TV shows are out there. And, you know, I'd much, as I say, I, I would be much more interested in a TV show that actually sits down and talks about a process than anything else. Um, you know, and, and, and in thinking of that, you know, a lot of people, the History Channel is one that really bothers me. A little bit off topic right now, but it can be on topic because History Channel every now and then has a car show. The History Channel needs to get back to being the History Channel and not everything else that they do. Because back when it started, it was actually very interesting. A lot of documentaries, a lot of, and actually a lot of early History Channel days had some really good automotive history programming on. It's actually, I was in college, freshman year of college. So that would have been, I'm gonna date myself here. Uh, that would have been 2001, uh, 2001, 2002. I remember watching the History Channel. Now, I don't know when the History Channel actually started, but 2001 was still, let's say, fairly probably early in their lifespan of being a, a TV station or channel, whatever you want to call it, on cable network. And that was actually the first time I saw people from the Henry Ford Museum, people like Bob Casey, the curator of transportation at the time, and various people, in, including Leslie Kendall, the, the curator of the Peterson Automotive Museum, on a automotive documentary talking about the history of the automobile. That was one of the, I remember distinctly, one of the times I remember, man, that, although I'm in the middle of trying to be a chemistry major, I thought, man, that's actually really cool that these guys are out there doing this, talking about the history of the automobile, which I've been so passionate about. You know, now it's basically 20 years later, it's 19 years later. And for the last 15 years, so not long after I saw those shows, okay, let's say the last 10 to 12 years, I have professionally been you know, known and been colleagues with people like Bob Casey and Leslie Kendall, it's what created a passion in me at the time. I think if we could get back to that, the, the actual real discussions, the informative TV shows, I think there's a void for that. I think people are, are looking for that and wanting that. So yes, if we get back to it, a very long winded way of saying yes, if we get back to it, it is very likely that I would be more interested in watching some of those programs. But then again, I might not because I'd rather be out in my garage actually working on stuff. And just to drop it, History Channel started January 1st, 1995. I looked it up. While we were well, talking. there we go. They were only six years old. They were still a baby. They were still doing the history documentaries. And I'll be honest, I love it when they do the documentaries. 
But again, that stuff that has moved to, I think, to Netflix and to Apple TV and to Amazon Prime, because the, they're trying to get the subscribers and they're trying to, I think, get a more in, maybe intelligent um, subscriber. My mom has been telling me about a show she's been watching on, I can't remember if it's Netflix or um, uh, Amazon, but I think it might be Amazon. And it's the, like the history of World War II. And they go through it like day by day. Every episode is one day of the war or something. And it's an immensely long series. Or, you know, every, one hour is one, uh, one day of the war or something like that. And gets really, really deep into what's happening in all corners of the world. And, you know, that's something that should be on the History Channel. That's something that, you know, hopefully my... $90 a month that is the portion of my cable bill that's for cable or television programming should be buying me. Many years ago, I came up with an idea for a TV show. And I asked my brother, who is in television production, what, how would you launch this show? And the li little snot said to me, and we're talking 2007, 2008, he goes, what I would do is I would start filming little snippets five minutes of that show and putting them on this thing called youtube and at the time youtube's a joke blah 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 little did i know i'd you know i'd tell you one thing i'd be broadcasting from hawaii or jamaica or something right now you know he said that that's up and coming and that's what's happened is i used to watch this old house you know one of my big hobbies outside of automobiles is woodworking and I loved watching this old house because that's the only woodworking thing that you could get, that and New Yankee Workshop. And those were kind of real shows. And then this old house became a commercial again. You know, oh, you know, Tommy's putting in this new fancy insulation or this new house wrap or whatever. It became a commercial in that. And then David Marks came out with his woodworking show on one of the uh, television shows, and he was a little bit more than just all DeWalt power tools than what Norm was. And, you know, Norm was basically turned out to be, you know, his show was an advertisement for power, you know, DeWalt power tools. All of a sudden, I think, you know, when I started to start watching this YouTube thing that my brother talked about, I started watching The Wood Whisperer and things like that and getting my woodworking education on YouTube because they were honestly teaching me things. And now you can get on there and, you know, a lot of the YouTube stuff I watch is still woodworking, but there's still, you know, there's a sh channel on there, mini truck. And, you know, Derek called me the mini truck guy. It's not the best produced channel. They're 25 episodes in or something, but they're honestly doing the work to the car. Excuse me, building this Mazda lowrider. And yeah, they'll plug a product and, you know, they're trying, you know, they have no budget. So they're hoping to get some sponsors to give them some parts, but they're honestly doing the work. You know, the guy's trying to educate his daughter on how to do certain things with, but that's, I think YouTube is going to be a driving force because, you know, YouTube's the second largest search engine, you know, Google and then YouTube. And, and ironically, I think doesn't Google own YouTube or Alphabet own YouTube? So they're really the same large search engine. And the most common thing or the most common search term on YouTube is how do I and then whatever you want to do. That's because that honest programming's there. You know, it might be an idiot that you get and there might be 16 people showing you how to change a tire. How do I change a tire? And, you know, somebody's doing it by jacking up the car with, you know, party balloons and something. And somebody else is, you know, doing it with every safety precaution in the world. And somewhere between those two is the happy medium. But I think YouTube's driving it. I think TV services, Netflix, uh, et cetera, are putting the money behind it because they're seeing, they're watching, they're, they're open to the new technologies. And television is not open to YouTube. Television jokes about YouTube. A YouTuber isn't TV. And I know some YouTubers that are very intelligent and they show everything and they've had TV shows and they swear they will never go back to TV because they can do so much more with so much less. You know, you can buy, you know, you do a television show, you got a hundred thousand dollar budget because you got to have 50 people doing something to make a half hour show where a YouTube guy can knock it out for 
three thousand dollars if if that and that includes buying all the tools and materials and he can turn around and make that money back and expand his show and invest in himself and i think we're seeing a big turn i think cable television and that will just be an entertainment junction i think we're seeing that the deep in-depth stuff is going to be through these services we're going to pay seven to fifteen dollars a month to have because it gives them the budget to create these shows i'm hoping youtube doesn't destroy it with all their rules and their monetization and how they can throw people off but you can get some very intelligent people that with no more than their iphone or their galaxy are creating wonderful and spectacular videos on information and history and yeah there's still some pretty lousy stuff out there and along with me never subscribing to motor trend television i have yet to ever watch an episode of the grand tour i'm not a member of drive tribe all of that i have some of that stuff it's just all too much drama behind the scenes on the scenes drama and entertainment and that's one reason you're sitting here listening to me do a podcast is i love podcasting because i get to listen to a show that tells me exactly what i want to hear and I don't have to worry about drama or whatever. I get to learn exactly what I want to know. Kind of my summary of everything, Derek. Do you have more to add to my rambling? Uh, no, I, I actually, I was just on YouTube University. There's actually some really interesting videos uh, on how to drive, how to repair and how a Zamboni works. <laughs> hey, nothing, nothing about the Zamboni. And I can't remember what podcast I was listening to the other day. And I haven't listened. It was actually a podcast about podcasting. And they talked about Zambonis. Whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody out there is taking the Zamboni thing. We're, we're going to have to have a discussion uh, with this podcast. Yeah, I'm, I might have to reach out to Stephen and uh, Stargate is... Pioneer. They do a little podcast called Better Podcasting, which I've learned a lot from, and they actually helped me on my Zoom Zoom L12 that is the mixer that I use in the studio here. Um, But yeah, come to think of it, maybe they're listening to me, and that's where the Zamboni talk. Now, granted, one of them's Canadian, and I think, think everybody in Canada has a Zamboni in their driveway. I don't care. That's our thing. And also, John, it's after uh, 9 o'clock, and... uh, I believe my 500 pound life is on TLC. I I'm missing it. Well, well I'm going to wrap up real quickly. And while you guys are on the internet looking for, you know, what's on YouTube and that, be sure to check out our website, you know, nodrivinggloves.com. You know, right now, if you go there, you're going to see, you can check out our merchandise page and a lot of the interview guests we have, they have products, books, things they're selling, you can get a lot of the chassis media stuff. We've got links. If you want to watch a couple of the chassis media docs, you can go right to our page, go to a merchandise page and the links are right there to go to chassis media or to go to Amazon and watch the shows for free on prime. We're not even, you know, getting a kickback there. Of course, some things we do get some uh, affiliate money for. There's also links to all of our past shows. Our entire catalog of hundred and almost 150 episodes is available there. And then, of course, if you go right now on the 24th, roughly the, sh- the show that we record the week of the 24th, which will probably be actually the 26th, we'll be drawing the name and we're giving away a copy of Wheel Hub, Truck Hub, and Mustang Hub magazine. And one winner gets all three copies. If you go to our website, a pop-up comes up as soon as you go there. Enter your information. You're entered. Uh, We've got some great response to that contest. And uh, we might end up with a couple extra three-packs and that. And I'm thinking of giving a gift to actually everybody who enters. It won't be $60 worth of magazines for everybody, but everybody might end up with a gift out of that. So be sure to go to our website. Look around there get a little bit familiar we might end up adding a blog page or such to it Um, i've added a blog page to my production business page and it hasn't been so bad and remember you can comment to us now via email via the facebook page all the social medias which of course all those links again are on the um, website but we also have a phone number you can reach out to us at and that's 802-321-4ndg or 4634. Just remember, 
802-321 for no driving gloves. And give us a call and leave us a voicemail. And uh, remember, when you leave a voicemail, we may use you on air. We couldn't get 8675309. Um, I was more concerned about getting like no driving gloves. I kind of like 321 for no driving gloves. That's why it's a Vermont area code. Uh, it is uh, a Google voice number. So I could, you know, I went through a whole bunch of numbers to find that. We'll just go ahead and we're going to try to do some of these teasers since we have so many episodes actually in the can to be edited. Next week sometime, we'll release our Chandler Howard video, our episode, and he he's uh, he's calling us from a cave, again, part of the Zoom quality, but he's calling us from a cave discussing um, audio, or excuse me, automotive detailing, you know, some of the ins and outs of automotive detailing, and he has some very humorous things to say about a Zamboni. So unless you have anything else, Derek, I'm... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and get into this rock and outro that we have now. No, no, I, I, I will encourage everybody though, to uh, listen to the Chandler Howard episode when it comes out. Uh, actually, we had some really good conversation about taking care of automotive paint and interiors. And I was uh, really impressed uh, with Chandler and uh, yeah, I, so keep listening. And like I said, you know, we're going to have some cool news coming up on at least my end of the automotive world uh, in one of our interviews coming up. Yeah, that should come out in two or three weeks, but we'll, we'll know more. You'll hear about it in the uh, host conversations next week. I guess that's what we'll call these episodes, our host conversations. But with that, thanks for joining No Driving Gloves. This is John. I'm out of here. Have a great day, evening, night, whatever it is. Thank you for listening, and remember to look us up at nodriving.gloves.com. There you can find back episodes, links to products we recommend, and links to all of our social media. Be sure to tell a friend about us. No Driving Gloves is edited and produced by J. Lewis Productions. <laughs>